Hi everyone, this is Rebecca, and today I'm going to be doing a resin and alcohol ink pour. I'm giving you some tips on how I save some money while doing my art. Um, just one thing to know ahead of time is that I never go cheap on the resin itself. Um, I have found that anything other than the best resin yellows, and then even if you are saving money in the short term, by using um, other products that don't cost as much, it's not worth it because you waste all of it when your resin ends up um, turning yellow and ruining your project. So what I am using is Stone Coat Countertops brand Quick Coat, um, equal amounts A and B. And I'm gonna just pour these into the cups real quick and mix them up. And as I do that, I'll tell you what I've got prepped here. Um, one of the tips that I like to use when I am working on my resin and trying to save some money is that um, I went to the dollar store and got a bunch of picture frames. And so the picture frame that's in front of you right now was one that was um, being sold for $1.99. And I caught their day where the blue stickers were half off. So I got this frame for a dollar and I just thought it was really cute. And so um, I've taken the picture out of it, and with the picture out, I cleaned the glass, lifted it out, and then I put E6000 glue all the way around the picture frame to seal the glass into the um, frame so that when I pour resin, I'm gonna pour resin directly into it. When I pour my resin, it's not gonna end up um, leaking out everywhere, and I hope I've checked my seal well. <laughs> I, I looked around it a few times. I had a little extra glue in some spots. So hopefully my resin is going to stay right in this picture frame. And I think leaving the glass in is going to help with my 3D look even more because um, it will add one extra layer of depth that if I had been doing the picture the other direction, I would have done a clear coat on top. So I'm saving money by um, using that glass as my clear coat and doing this upside down. Um, in addition... I got, um, uh, I was at the store and I saw the tiny things of E6000 on sale. So I got a pack of a bunch of those and it used not even quite all of it to seal that in. So um, that should be hopefully a good tight seal. I'm just mixing or pouring my part B here and then I'll mix them together real quick. Now this is the Stone, Count Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat. And one thing to note about that is it, it sets up completely um, within about 20 minutes, but honestly, I've never gotten more than 15 minutes working time out of it. And since I am going to be putting drops of alcohol ink all over this piece, I'm going to do my best to go as fast as I possibly can. Um, the time hasn't started yet. The time will start as soon as I put these two together. Just grabbing this stir stick. One other quick note. Um, if you're looking at ways to save money on art supplies, in addition to me getting at this at, um, at Goodwill, I, this was the picture inside of it, cute picture, probably won't keep that, but the back of it, um, I was actually surprised, is a harder piece of wood, not, um, not cardboard. So what I'm going to do is actually save that, and if I can peel these off, then I will peel off the stickers and the back will already be black and I'll be able to do another pour on top of this. So I'm going to add this to my pile of all of my canvases. All right, so the big thing with using Quick Coat is that you have to have everything ready. Um, so I have all my inks ready. I am using a lot of blues and brown and gold. I want this to be kind of an oceany kind of theme because of what the colors already are on the picture frame. And one other nice thing about this picture frame is since it's already painted and sealed, I shouldn't have any air bubbles coming out around the edges. But just in case in these corners, I added a little extra um, E6000 just to make sure that nothing leaked through. So I am using um, alcohol ink in the color pool, turquoise, and patina, espresso, and then I'm doing a gold mixative. And then I'm going to use white to sink it all in. The white weighs a little more, so once you put your drops of color in, you're going to want to use white on top of them to make them sink to give your picture a 3D effect from the other direction. Um, the white I bought 
Um, I got on sale on Amazon and it came in a really big bottle. So I got this bottle for a dollar at Hobby Lobby for a set of two. And um, I just put a little bit of it in here at a time because the other one didn't have a dropper and this one does. So I am going to begin, I'm going to have all this ready. I'm going to begin to mix my resin in a second here and then we'll just move really quickly through all of this so that my resin doesn't harden too fast. And I will say I have not tried alcohol ink in the quick coat yet and so I'm hoping it does give me enough working time still to um, let the ink really sink in and move around. I think it will, but we will find out. I've got my torch ready, got all my stuff ready, and I do have a straw standing by in case I need to blow any of this around too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pour part B into part A because it is thicker and it um, will naturally, if I hold it up higher, it will fall into A and kind of start mixing itself in. If you do it a little higher, you get a good mix of it going in. And then I don't know how much you can see from the camera angle, but I'm going to just scrape the rest of this out because now my 15 minutes of work time has started. So I am getting all of this in here. And I have to say, um, I love stone coat. And, and there are great ways that you can save money on some of these art products, even if you are doing, um, doing the really nice resin. I, I have to think... Um, abstract boss and I listened a lot to Petra Youngblood and also Artist Till Death. Um, I watch all of their videos and I just love how they teach us all of this but some of them um, at a few different times had um, been working with stone coat countertops and they actually provided to all of their customers a discount and so even though I wanted to splurge for the more um, the more expensive resin I was able to still get it at a discount, which was so nice of them, and they're all such wonderful artists, and I'll provide links to their pages and everything because I've just learned a ton from them. But um, you'll notice when you use the Quick Coat, it is even thicker to mix initially. Um, still very mixable, but it feels thicker if you do the equal parts ratio. And so you just got to really work it for a couple minutes. So I'm going to do that real quick here, and then I'm going to get it into the frame, and I'm going to torch it immediately to get all the bubbles out. Um, not over torching, because if you over torch, you could even decrease that <laughs> um, time that you have to work with it by a little. So you have to have to move fast, but all right, I'm going to start pouring this in. Just get it all over here. Now, this is a little thicker than I obviously would do if I was... Um, like coating a pour that I had done, or if I'm working on a geode, I don't pour it quite so thick. But I want this thicker because I want my alcohol ink to have a really good 3D effect, and I want it to um, I want it to just look really nice and be able to see the layers as they're happening. So I'm trying to get um, I'm trying to get a little bit of thickness to my resin. I'm just going to push it toward all the edges. Toss my cups there. Um, now, typically, also, you want to make sure to leave some resin in your cup so that you can use it if you need to later. But again, this isn't quite a typical pour because this one, um, I'm just filling the whole thing and then I'm going to do all my design and, and art colors and everything with alcohol ink once the resin is already in. So I'm just, ooh, you can see, I'm just going to um, move this all around, get it on the edges and hold my breath that it doesn't leak through to the bottom. I'm now in the seam, so hopefully my glue job has held up very well. Um, we'll see here in just a second, but I'll get it in all the corners, all the way to the edges. And then what I will most likely do when I'm finished with this entire thing and once it is set um, and is completely dry is I will somehow, I haven't decided yet, I might just use one of my spray paint colors or something, but um, I don't really want the wall to show through if this hangs anywhere. So what I will most likely do is spray like a solid white or a light color that matches what I've chosen um, onto the back so that the back of this is a solid color so that you don't see um, any, any wall through because the wall might not match. It will if I hang it here at my house, but I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or if I'm going to... Um, make it be for sale. So 
got a show coming up in November and I keep making things and thinking I'll use it for the show and then I like them and I keep hanging them in my house. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so one other thing I like about using picture frames besides the fact that um, if you get them at the right places, they're really inexpensive. Um, one of the other things I like is that you have um, this natural barrier. Like I said, the paint is already on this one and sometimes there's already, um, sometimes there's a finish even on the ones that are still just a regular wood that just um, keeps that, it keeps any of the resin from going into the wood. And so I really like that. Um, that's helpful, but it's also nice because I don't have to figure out what to do with edges. And especially when you're working with alcohol ink, if you've seen this 3D effect before, it all goes into the middle um, as it dries. And so, whoop, that was a little hot. I'm trying to get a bubble that's deep in there. Um, so I'll hit this again when I'm done. Um, so what I like about this is that there's this little bit of frame here underneath because of the glass. And so as the ink pulls in, it can pull away from the sides a little farther without you really noticing that any of the ink has disappeared, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start by just dropping dots all over. Um, and again, like I said, what we'll do is after you put any of these dots down, you'll add a white dot on top. The white alcohol ink is heavier than the other colors and it will push the ink down in. So. Now I'll take my white and just go. And it can be as accurate or not as you want. Um, the other thing you can do, and I, I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet on this one, is you can um, uh, use a straw to blow this around. I wouldn't recommend a heat gun because that will blow it, I think, more than you need it to. But um, you could use just a straw and blow these around if you want like a swirl effect or anything like that, but I'm going to wait and see first how this turns out. Okay, I'm switching to the next blue color. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Adding lots of color everywhere I go here. And we'll do this a few times so you can land it on top of the other colors. You can make it mix all around. I'm going back with my white again. I'm going to hit all those spots and just try to sink my colors down in there a little bit. Now again, like I said, with this um, with this quick coat of stone coat resin, I don't know for sure how much time I'm going to have to get this stuff to really sink. So I'm trying to move even quicker than I do when I'm making like a geode or something that doesn't involve the alcohol ink sinking. Um, just because I want to make sure that I really get the depth that I want and get the ink to sink in there before um, everything starts to harden up. These are also fun because it's just neat to watch the colors and watch all the inks as they interact with each other. It's beautiful to watch the process of it happening um, and the changes and each new color you add adds just a fun dynamic to what you're doing. Coming back with my white. Oh, I like these colors so far. Um, again, because of the picture frame and also this cool little handle, I don't find many picture frames that have the little handles like that, the rope. Um, it made me automatically think of like a water kind of scene. So I picked three different blues. I'm going to do a tiny bit of espresso, not a ton. I thought it'd be neat to have some brown just to give it that idea of the sand and things, but I don't want um, I don't want brown to overpower, so I'm not going to use much brown. I'll probably just do it one time here, and then I'm going to use some gold as well. And what I've noticed in the past is that my gold tends, or any of the um, metallic colors, tend to really sink um, all the way to the bottom. So then when you flip your picture over. They're right on the top up against the front. And so I also, um, I want to use more gold, but I want to try to make the drops not too big and um, kind of spread apart because if those are going to sink and go all the way to the bottom, I don't want them to land on the bottom and spread out 
and black my other colors or overpower so that it looks just like a mostly gold picture. So now I'm doing that gold. I am going to add gold some to the edges a little more. Since it sinks, I'm hoping that um, with, with how the colors all come into the edge when it dries, that um, these will sink a little faster and they won't go so far to the middle so that I just have um, a little more color on my edges. So I'll do that and then in the middle here, I'll add just little tiny dots. One of the reasons I'm testing the stone coat with this method for the first time was that I was hoping that maybe this gold would not sink quite as much. Um, it like that maybe it would be thick enough that that will um, be slowed down a little bit just because I love seeing the gold, but I don't want it, like I said, to sink to the bottom and go underneath everything else and end up being the only focal point. So that's all the gold I'm going to do as well as how I only did a little bit with the brown. And now I'm just going to go back and do all of my blue colors one more time. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I'll show you guys then my result after I check it all out and see what happens when it's dry. So coming back now with the patina. And I'm going to really focus on these edges because I know the color is going to pull in, but i um, trying to get as much color to push out for now until that starts to happen will help me a little bit. Um, and as I said before, it also helps that since I'm doing this inside a picture frame, the picture frame on the other side holding the glass comes into the glass a little and will block, hopefully block, part of where the color has pulled away from the edges. All right, so just little drops of white and that green. I love that patina. It's such an oceany color. And as I'm doing all this, in my mind, I'm still trying to decide if I want to blow any of this around or um, just let it be what it is. I'm going to add a little extra there because that's not really covered. All right, I'm moving on to turquoise. Gonna add a little more turquoise. Ooh, got a little on the wood. That's okay, it's the back. Oh, I think this is gonna be really pretty. I'm really excited to see it. And um, you know, another advantage to using the quick um resin is that you get to look at it sooner. And if you're someone impatient like me, that's a huge bonus is getting to see what you've done. A lot quicker. Um, it's also nice because if you have any curious kiddos, they don't have as much time to come and tilt something that you're hoping stays even and different things like that. Whoop, whoop, that'll be a nice white spot. The nice thing about doing these ocean colors is that the white, if I get too much in any spots, um, I don't think it can be too much because I am uh, white. White is a great color to go with it. So last color, cool. It's just a really cool watercolor. And I can already tell the way the resin is acting that I'm getting low on time in terms of the resin setting up. Um, and so I'm almost finished. I think I, I think I timed myself pretty well and I'm gonna just one more time hit it with the torch at the end. Very, and eh, maybe I better not. This isn't all sunk. I don't want to light the whole thing on fire with the alcohol. <laughs> that would ruin a really cool picture. All right. A little bit more. And then just because, now that I'm thinking about it, I would like to have some white showing. I'm just going to start adding some extra white along the edges. Um, trying to get those spots that are going to pull away. Trying to get them a little filled. They'll still pull away some, but like I said, hoping that this first try with the um, quick set resin is not going to give it as much time to pull away because it's going to dry too fast for that. So, oh, I love what a cool, cool design this is from the outside. Oh, it looks like I'm running out of my white that I put into this container. All right, I think that about finishes it up. 
Okay, so again, just really briefly, some budget saving tips. I purchased the frame for a dollar at Goodwill. It was a super cute find with the handle and then it was already painted such a nice color. And you'll see the front when I'm done and show it to you. Um, the front's really cute too. It's got just a little bit of sanding to it. It's a little shabby chic kind of thing. Um, and so that ended up being a dollar, which was very exciting. Um, again, I never skimp on my resin because you have to use quality resin or it's going to yellow and you're going to ruin your picture and then all your hard work goes to waste. But um, I used Stone Coat Countertop Brand Resin and today I used Quick Coat. Quick Coat. I also use their art resin, but um, the Quick Coat and the art resin I was able to get discounts for. And again, I will link you to the people that um, provided those for me and they're wonderful artists and I've been so excited that they put their material on YouTube for free and I will I will definitely link you to them. And then um, I used some E6000, glued the frame in, made sure the seal was tight. I believe it is guys, I don't see this getting any lower or leaking anywhere so I think I did it. And um, I'm gonna come back in about an hour and it'll still be a little tacky, but I'll probably check it. And then about three hours or so, um, I'm going to come back and flip it over and show you guys the results. So thank you so much for watching part one. Hi, everyone. I am back for the second part of our video and um, getting ready to flip this over. Super excited to see what happened. I did... Um, shuffle things a little bit as I was getting ready to do the second half and I felt it stick a little and looked under and it looks like maybe a tiny bit of my resin leaked but I don't think it's too bad. Um, so let's flip it over and see what it looked like. These little tabs that hold the back of the picture frame in. I'm going to bend those back down so I have um, a flat surface to work on when I flip it over for the second half. So we flip those. A little stuck in the resin. There we go. All right, let's see what happened. Ooh, it's pretty, yay. Yep, right here, just the teeniest bit at least. That'll be easy to get off with my Dremel. I will just um, I will just get that off with the sandpaper attachment on my Dremel. Uh, I'll give you guys a really good um, close up of everything once we start the second half, but let me just see if I can hold it up. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but lovely colors, lots of really pretty little tendrils sticking up. Um, so great, I'm excited, this is gonna be really pretty. So let me just tell you what I'm doing with the second half of this. Um, as we talked about before, this layer of glass on top is really helpful because it um, gets rid of a whole layer of resin that you have to spend money on and you have to use to um, finish your project. So what my plan with this is, is since we already have that layer of depth, I've got my A and B ready. I'm going to mix some more resin, not as thick this time because it's just going on top. And then I am going to go ahead and add just my turquoise alcohol ink, a little bit of white, and some more of the gold this time. If you remember, I didn't use too much gold because I didn't want it to come and stick to the glass. Um, but we're going to put another layer of resin on and then just add a little bit of those. And I don't, I don't want to do a lot because I want the layers, but I want you to be able to see everything under here. So um, I'm just going to use a straw to blow the resin and the alcohol ink around. I'm not going to get a heat gun out or anything. So um, let me go ahead and add my part B and my part A together. And um, if you'll recall, I said what I like to do is make part B the part that I pour into part A and I kind of hold it up high because part B is heavier. When you do this, it falls deeper into part A and it just starts helping to mix itself up a little better before I even start stirring. Um, again, I'm using the quick coat, so my 15 minutes has started, but this part shouldn't take too long because I don't really want to cover up all the pretty stuff that's already going on here. So let me real quick just get this mixed together and we'll pour it in and torch it and then we will start on the alcohol ink on this side. Oh, I really like how the colors turned out. It feels like a very serene, oceany kind of feel. And you know, um, just an abstract version of this, I'm thinking that the, um, the way that the alcohol ink dries in the first half 
with all the little tendrils sticking up. It almost reminds you of like a sea anemone or something like that. So um, this alcohol on top that I'm about to do will almost kind of be like our waves on the top with the sea life underneath. Not, not actually, more of an abstract concept, but I think adding this layer and that depth is going to really just make this whole thing pop. I'm really excited about how to look. Um, I have a lot of light color in this one, which was kind of my plan. So with using the turquoise and the gold and the white, I'm hoping also to add just like kind of a pop of color because I have some of the turquoise in here, but um, especially over in this area, I'm going to try to add some more color just to, um, just to bring it out and make it a little more bold looking. So I'm mixing, mixing, and I'm still using the Quick Coat. Stone Coat Countertop brand. I love this stuff. It's so wonderful to see my work sooner <laughs> because I'm impatient, but also um, it's just so high quality and it it dries so clear. The, the back of this looks great. All right, this is all going on here. I'm going to spread it way out and um, then we'll get some ink on and blow it around and then we'll be done and I'll give you guys a close up. All right, get rid of those cups. Now, just like last time, I'm gonna spread this around. You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. I don't I don't love wearing gloves when I'm doing the alcohol ink because it just feels a little clumsy. But I did have them on as I was opening um, the A and B parts of the resin and as I first got it out because you really just don't wanna get resin on your skin, obviously. I know some kinds are more toxic than others. Um, Stone Coat Countertops is a really gentle one. There's not any harsh fumes or anything like that. But still, obviously, you're not going to want to get it on yourself if at all possible because it's resin and it's sticky and it's a big mess. So I um, already did the gloves. Probably should have left them on because <laughs> I'm not the cleanest person when it comes to resin. But um, I'll do my best to see if I can avoid getting it on me. I'm just evening this all out, making sure I've got it all over, and then we'll torch it real quick, and then we'll add our alcohol ink, and we'll call this project done. So I can tell, and I you probably can't see it really well because you're so far away here, but even adding this layer is just making the depth of this thing really pop. And I'm super excited to see when I add the alcohol on top, what it's going to do for the overall look. Because already this other layer just gives it kind of a bigger wow factor. All right, getting there, almost done. Get these little corners here. Okay. Now this time I don't have to worry about the resin going anywhere through the canvas or through the frame or anything like that, but I'm still just um, really quickly going to tip it a little just to kind of even things out. Just want to get things into all the little corners. And make sure even if I miss something with my popsicle stick, I've got everything. I'm gonna grab my popsicle stick one more time for one corner. Right in there. And as you know, if you've worked with resin before, once you have resin somewhere, it's all self-leveling. So it's just getting it into every little nook and cranny. And once you've done that, if your table's level, um, it'll all even itself out. All right, I'm gonna just tip it one more time, make sure I'm kinda even all over. Some of this will happen after I'm done while it sits. Okay, let me real quickly here, just, I don't know what torches some of you guys use, but um, my blowtorch seems like it always has to have one click that doesn't work before it'll light up for me. <laughs> All right, 
I'm just getting my bubbles out. Okay, I think we're in good shape. So, um, as I said before, you don't want to um, use your torch too much because if you really heat the resin, it'll actually speed up the process of it starting to harden and we already don't have much time so I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to start with adding a few drops at a time and moving them around. I'm blowing pretty hard. Um, I really want to get it moving around. I don't want it to look like I have any circular drops. And I just kind of picked a direction. Um, it seemed like a lot of the ink looked like it was going this way anyway. So I thought if I make it go that way, maybe it's kind of a wavy look, like waves in the water. I'm going to do one more section with some gold and then you'll notice um, the resin does tend to pool back together so what I'll probably do is get all the color on and then I will keep going at it a couple more times and blowing it till I get it really broken apart. Do the same thing with the white and you'll notice I just did it but actually the um, metallics are the only ones you need to shake the ink color with the alcohol um, they completely mix together so any of your regular alcohol inks you don't have to shake for them to work I just get in the habit of it I love really blowing the white in the resin because it laces so well that it really looks like little wave caps. I'm trying to get some of it kind of in there with the gold too. All right, I might add a little here, but I feel like this is my favorite part, this section of what we did the first time. And so I'm gonna try to avoid adding too much color there because I don't wanna take away from any of that design. table. I don't want to hit that with my straw. I'm getting toward the edge here and I don't want everything to pile up against the very edge so I'm going to blow it a little bit this way, some of the gold just to get it off of the edge. I'm not trying to blow it back that way, just straight down to break it apart a little bit. Oh I love it so far. Okay, 
I'm going to add this last color and then that should be it. And I will give you guys a close up on how pretty it looks and the depth of it. So I don't have much down here. I'm just going to get a couple drips down there, a drip there. I don't want to overpower with this color because I love this color, but I um, don't want to make things too dark. So I'll call that good. Oh, you guys, I love it. It's really pretty. So I'm blowing straight down at first to break the two parts of the color apart and then blowing it so I have more than one line of the color. I'm totally happy with my colors blending, so I'm letting this blue kind of blow into the white. Now again, I want some color here so it doesn't look empty, but I'm really trying not to get too much. So I'm going to blow this blue really thin so that you can see all the pretty colors underneath it. All right, I'm going to take a step back for a second. I really like that. I think I'm going to break up the color in this section a little more. Okay, I might add one more drop of blue right here in the middle just to balance things out. Just one and I'll try to spread it thin. I think I am happy with that. I'm going to grab the camera here and get down a little closer so you can all see some detail of what I just did. Remove the camera. I'm going to wiggle around for a second. Okay. So let me see if I can give you some close ups. Get myself tilted the right way here. Sorry. All right. So I don't know if you can see, there's so much depth in there and the color is really popping out. Um, you can see all those underneath layers. And then adding that color on top just gives it a lot of depth. Try to zoom out at the end a little and make sure you can see all of it. But... There it all is. And I know you can't quite see the depth as well on the camera as I can in person, but um, it looks really cool. I'm very excited about it. I'll try to get really close, see if my camera will focus. There we go. There's some close ups of all the designs going on underneath there. I love it. Very happy with it. One more shot of the whole thing for you guys. And that's my finished project. Um, if you guys like this video, I would super appreciate it if you hit like or subscribe or share. And um, keep following me if you'd like to learn more tips on how to design resin art on a budget. And I thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.